With Elon Musk's company Neuralink getting a ton of coverage in recent weeks, people naturally have a lot of questions about brain-computer interface in general. I've been working with various types of brain-computer interface devices for the past 10 years, and people are often surprised to find that there's a lot of variation in these devices right now, both in price and in capabilities. My favorite definition of brain-computer interface right now is any device that allows you to have connection between the brain and external devices, which allows for the monitoring of brain activity and or the control of devices through brain signals. In this video, I'll take you through the full price range of different BCI technologies so that you can understand this emerging field of technology that is truly fascinating. On the front end, we have a lot of consumer devices that are delivering true value to people right now in the marketplace. And in the later devices that we'll talk about at the end of the video, there are some totally mind-blowing demonstrations going on so that we can understand what to expect in these technologies as they come down in price over the next five years. And can you guess which one on the list is Neuralink? Because we'll be sure to compare that company to the rest of them at the end of this video. Starting at the lowest barrier of entry in tracking brain signals is actually through the peripheral nervous system. For instance, this Python Ready device tracks the nerves in your wrist, and it only charges $10 a month for this wristband. Despite the low price point, Python is really on the leading edge of what can be done by monitoring the nerves in your wrist to test things like reaction time and impulse control by using specific testing techniques and training procedures. They also have an upcoming platform that can be used to control a computer with hand gestures. Similar devices are being developed at Meta Control Labs, and there's another one called the Mudra wristband that you can get off of Amazon right now. Mudra is actually working on micro movements to control a computer, which I think is really neat. So technically, you don't even need to move your hand to control a computer through your wrist nerves. Next up at about the $300 price range are devices that can provide you feedback from your brain data. The Muse headband tracks your brainwave electrical activity during meditation and sleep. It can change audio feedback to help you meditate deeper or help you get to sleep quicker. The Mendy tracks blood flow in the frontal lobe of your brain and uses visual and audio feedback to help you train focus. At the $600 mark, we have the Neurosity Crown, which is the first device in this list that you can use to attempt training of mental commands. The commands tend to be imagining jumping jacks or pinching your left hand or biting a lemon to train machine learning algorithms they call kinesis that can be linked with different devices to control lights, feed prompts into AI, or even control a drone or a remote car. The main hurdle with the wearable like this is that you are using EEG from the scalp, which can contain a lot of noise. So it makes differentiation between the different commands difficult and you often have to recalibrate the signal to get it to work well. In the $700 range, we have the Neurable headphones through Master and Dynamic that are the world's first high quality headphones designed to track your focus through EEG brain sensors on the earmuffs. I'll be getting these in the studio next week as they are sending out their first units to the public later this month. I cannot wait to make more content for you with these in my hands because I got to try them last January at CES and I was really blown away by their high quality and accuracy. Next up, we have the $1,000 mark, which is the Emotive Epoch X. This has been a favorite amongst wearable EEG researchers for its high signal quality compared to other devices in this wearable niche. This device has a neuromarketing option that I haven't seen used that much, but I think it's really neat. Unfortunately, the software package costs an additional $1,000 per year, so that definitely adds to the price tag. Much like the Neurosity Crown, this device can actually be used to train mental commands, and some gamers out there are even starting to use it to play video games. Getting into the $1,500 range, we have the Sensei headset. This is the first price point where we see a combination of EEG brainwave analysis and red light therapy pulses that are designed to push your brain to peak performance. It's also the first of these wearables to build in evoke related potential testing, which tests your reaction time and brain health. They're even collecting data like peak alpha measurements, which have been associated with brain age and IQ scores. And it's important to note that they incorporated in that red light therapy that pulses to help increase your peak alpha frequency with training. 
As you can see, there's a lot more packed into that device than the Muse headband, for example, which is commanding a higher price point at this point. Now, taking a leap up into the $20,000 range is the first device on this list with FDA breakthrough status. The Cognition Axon R helps you navigate an augmented reality screen by using flickering screen tags. The visual brain data collected off the back of your head can detect where you're looking at on the screen and allow you to navigate that graphical user interface. It also has a very sophisticated speech generation AI that offers phrases to the user based on geographical location and context. The Axon R is available to researchers in various fields and hopefully will be helping people with disabilities through insurance plans soon. Next up, we move into the $100,000 range where Colonel has their full head coverage FNIRS helmet. Founded by longevity pioneer Brian Johnson, this headset received a ton of fanfare and attention in the community upon its research release three years ago. But since then, Brian Johnson has actually stepped down as CEO as he wanted to focus more on his longevity project. Since then, the company's sort of been quietly puttering along, but they're gathering a lot of really interesting scientific and clinical trial data under the leadership of Ryan Fields, who was originally the chief technology officer. Their use cases in current trials include the assessment of psychedelic treatments like ketamine. They also have a new and less intimidating form factor. I am sure we'll hear a much more from Kernel in the coming months and years. I'm still really excited about this one. The next category was somewhat difficult to assign value to because of its research nature. This is not something you can exactly buy off the shelf for a certain amount, but I had to include it on the list because magnetoencephalography is really amazing. It captures the magnetic waves from the brain and often has to be done in an iron shielded room for the best results because the signals that they're collecting are so small that the earth's magnetic waves can actually affect the readings. These larger machines use super cooled coils to detect the magnetic waves, but recent efforts have been made to make it into a wearable where they have these small chambers filled with magnetically sensitive particles that affect light shown through the chamber. And in this way, they can detect the magnetic pulsing from the brain. This technology was recently used by the Meta slash Facebook research division to replicate images that people were watching. I find this tech fascinating, but so far it's proven to be too bulky and complicated for mainstream use so far. But hopefully someone will figure out how to make this one more practical in the future because its potential is so huge. And then here at the $3 million mark, we have the fMRI machines that are found in medical clinics and research facilities all across the world. Scientists have been able to replicate seen images images from brain data, imagine images, regenerate speech, all just by analyzing the blood flow patterns of the brain. Easier said than done, but these studies are absolutely fascinating. I'm hoping that these capabilities will be replicated in less expensive and bulky FNIRS helmet technologies like the Kernel Flow, but researchers continue to struggle with the amount of spatial resolution offered by FNIR helmets compared to functional MRI. The fMRI machines right now just have a lot more information, so hopefully FNIRs can get there along with the help of AI of analyzing those signals to reach the same level of data fidelity that they're getting in those research labs. There is some speculation that ultrasound FNIRs combinations might be able to overcome these hurdles, and there are people working on that right now. But finally, we come to our final device in this list. It's the only BCI company to have raised over $300 million, and they have one publicly stated patient so far. It is Neuralink. They've raised $363 million so far. And despite all the criticism, they really are breaking new ground. I'm actually really impressed that their first patient, Nolan Arbaugh, set a world record for 9.51 bits per second based on a BCI performance test called WebGrid. WebGrid tests how fast he's able to move around the cursor and how accurately, and he beat the world record compared to other BCI technology companies that have been around for almost 20 years now. It is the first implantable BCI company to use a flexible wire electrode that reportedly causes less inflammation and damage to brain tissue than the traditional hard spiked interfaces used by other BCI companies. The level of precision and control has been so great in some cases that Nolan thinks that he could have some advantage over other video games gamers because eventually he thinks he'd be able to move the pointer quicker than by using his hand. One of the most fascinating parts about his story is that he claims that the cursor is starting to move before he even thinks about it, bordering on the level of precognition. And after using the Neurosity Crown to fire off a couple of commands, I must say that I am jealous of that level of BCI performance, but I probably won't be getting brain surgery anytime soon to match Nolan's capabilities. At the end of the day, all these different companies and price points will help advance the science towards higher and higher quality devices 
that are increasingly powerful. On one hand, you have the extremely expensive and risky implantables that have great data, but small test populations. On the other hand, you have these cheaper wearables that have less clean data, but have thousands of participants to help show all kinds of data that we've never seen before, like differences in biometrics that you see with age and a host of other things. So I'm curious, which device would you most like to try? Be sure to leave that comment below. and Check out this video here where I talk about what actually might benefit you if you're interested in getting one of these devices and using it for yourself.